uh, for the viewing audience, what had, um, the progress that happened today is we were able to um, fully allocate the general fund and we are, the fiscal analyst is preparing the final calculations for the ARPA allocations uh, and that will be provided to the members hopefully by Sunday for the, the members to review and have uh, prepare any questions they may have to be presented on Monday. Uh, the senior LA will discuss with the members uh, the, pro the new provisions that we've added onto um, the appropriations bill in addition to some of the provisions that we are keeping from the current Public Law 22-08. And so at this time, I would like to recognize the senior LA to go over these provisions. Um, as soon as she um, finishes with uh, providing a summary of each of these provisions, I'll address any, uh, I'll open up to the floor for discussions with the members if they would like to amend add or remove any of these provisions that um, have been identified. Uh, I recognize the senior elder. Okay, good afternoon members. First, we begin with the figures. Uh, the figures will now reflect House Concurrent Resolution 22-02-SD1. Moving on, Section 304. The committee decided to change the title and now it reads payment in excess of base salary. Moving on to page 25. Section 700, general, subsection C, the amount of $20 million consisting of the unexpended funds that were allocated by the governor and legislatively adopted via Schedule B of Public Law 22-8 for Medicaid reimbursements under business unit number MI210172 for fiscal year 2022 shall be carried over to fiscal year 2023 for general appropriations by the CNMI legislature. Um, it's a partial draft. Uh, uh, Council, are you able to uh, take a few minutes break? Can Claire send it to you and then? No, you can. Um, you can just briefly go through it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Moving on, members. Page 30, Section 704, Executive Branch, Subsection C, of the funds appropriated to the Office of Planning and Development Operations, Business Unit Number 1022, $50,000 shall be used to fund a market feasibility study on the casino gaming industry in the Commonwealth. The Office of Planning and Development shall work in coordination and collaboration with the Commonwealth Casino Commission. Next provision is on page 31. Line eight, subsection D. In the event the United States Congress approves the extension of the federal medical assistant percentage, 83%, 17%, beyond the deadline of December 2022, then the funds appropriated to the Medicaid reimbursement business unit 1955, 51, I'm sorry, shall be reappropriated by the legislature. 
One second. We should we take that out now that we've only appropriated ten million, right? If I may, Mister. Uh, recognize. Um, I yeah. I think that. I think that it. Maybe it would um, make sense for us to adjust that language somewhat, uh, because it, it is possible that even the 10 million that we've set aside, if there is an extension of the FMAP of 8317, um, that there may be some funds that could be identified for reappropriation, right? So, um, so maybe some language that says that like any funds in excess of what is actually needed for the local match should be identified to the legislature for reappropriation. Okay. Yes. Um, recognize uh, senior early. Okay. okay, moving on. Page 33, section 708, boards and commissions. Subsection A, the board of election commission shall hire not more than 20 mm -hmm. NOPs or temporary employees for the general or special elections. Members, this was the language from FY22. I wasn't sure if you wanted to keep the language or you wanted me to delete the language. <clears throat> There's one more sentence. Let me just finish the sentence. Said personnel shall be from lists provided by all duly registered political parties, provided further that an equal number of temporary workers shall be hired from respective party lists. Uh, this was this was also to address this coming election, right? It would, the, when we added that in this, uh, yeah. Um, I'll leave that up to you, members. I think it was veto. No, it was veto. We can take it out. Yeah. But, yeah, I would suggest removing that section, at least for now. I mean, we can have more discussions about it with our Senate mm -hmm. counterparts, but um, yeah, yeah, but maybe we don't need it. So when I send you the draft, it'll um, have strike through on it, but the language will remain until the committee decides what to do. Okay. Finalize. Okay. Okay, moving on, page 34, other programs, subsection A, Northern Marianas College. Of the funds appropri appropriated to the Northern Marianas College under Business Unit 1605, $1,250,000 shall be used for the PROA promise. <clears throat> On page 35, subsection E, CNMI Medical Referral Program, we inserted the new name, Health Network Program, with the same language as in fiscal year 2022. Uh, it states the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation shall mm -hmm. administer the CNMI Medical Referral Program in parentheses open parenthesis, health network program, close parenthesis, including both inter-island and off-island referrals, consisting with its duties and responsibilities under Title III, Sections 2821, ETSEC of the Commonwealth Code. Um, sorry. <clears throat> Going back to NMC, uh, Mr. Chairman, it, is there any need that the members see to further describe what the PROA promise is? Because I don't think there's like a business unit or any anything that is descriptive right now in, in the budget draft, right? Of like what the PROA promise is. Right. Maybe uh, we could come up with that. Um, yeah, we can work with you. So like to create a new business unit? 
Um, specifically? Or? Well, no, I think just the description of what the PROA promise is. Um, it might, I think it might even be in the governor's budget transmittal, like in the narrative part. Uh, yeah, a program that provides US citizens, US citizen associates students last dollar scholarships. Um, so we, we can take that language that describes it and, and use it for that provision. Okay. <clears throat> The Medicaid program language is about a page long, including. Uh, it's the one in the current public law 22A to keep that language. Yeah, the one that allows like for the, the monies to be right. Um, and the OPM. And the <clears throat> also. Oh. We can take out the personnel listing. Let's take out the personnel Okay, so that notwithstanding any provision in Commonwealth law, the Office of Personnel Management shall undertake a classification of compensation. Yeah. Yeah, because that should have been done already, or at least in the current fiscal year. Well, and the, the conversion of so just strike through that, keep it in, and then <clears throat> okay. page 42, section 802, we have yet to receive um, outside sources figures. And in addition, lastly, legal counsel is still working on two provisions regarding the sugar sweetened tax and tobacco tax. Thank you, um, <laughs> Senior L.A. LeBlanc. Um, all right, members, so the Senior L.A. mentioned some of the provisions that were discussed as we went over through the budget deliberations. Um, most importantly, the uh, Outside sources uh, language that uh, appropriates the compact impact funds, the CW fees, as well as the tobacco settlement funds. Um, we are awaiting the letter from the acting secretary of finance um, to the committee to identify the figures and what um, agencies those monies will be uh, allocated for and so I was told that we should be getting that report by Monday and that will be included in the budget bill uh, for the members review uh, in addition the two uh, provisions that were worked on this afternoon that will be included in the draft uh, by the weekend uh, is the the committee is proposing an increase in the tobacco tax as well as the sugar and sweetened beverages tax for the upcoming fiscal year. And those funds uh, will be allocated to CHCC to cover uh, medical referral and other uh, um, CHCC related costs, whether it be operations or um, inner island and outside the scene of my referral. Uh, council is working on the la finalizing the language and will be provided to the senior LA and then as soon as that's done. Members, uh, again, as discussed earlier with the budget allocations, the language portion of the budget bill will be shared with the members over the weekend. Uh, and if you have any questions or concerns, please, uh, please uh, pro um, provide that or come with it on Monday. Um, so that we can finalize the draft. We are aiming to finish the, complete the draft by Monday afternoon, end of Monday. Um, and so uh, we will meet at 1 p.m. or 1.30 p.m. Uh, in hopes of completing the draft and um, 
if we get the notice from the Department of Finance, then I would ask members to please make arrangements. We may end up staying past 4.30. Uh, again, that would be the last piece of this budget bill, the outside sources. Um, and once we get that, we have all the information we need to move forward with the bill. And so I would like to have a completed project product by the end of Monday. Uh, the speaker may call a session on Friday to address the budget bill. Um, and so we would need that product completed so that the speaker can make the 72 hour notice by Tuesday. Um, if we do not get the letter from finance, then we will just, we'll have to act on that. Um, we'll have to, again, hold back on the adoption of the final product. Um, so again, uh, just to recap, uh, fiscal analysts will um, clean up the schedule, schedule A, which is general fund, schedule B, ARPA, and then schedule C is a combination of both uh, funding sources. And then uh, Senior LA will work on the language on the provisions of the provisions portion of the, the budget bill. Um, hopefully both uh, products will be available to the members by Sunday for review over the weekend and to discuss Monday afternoon at 1.30. Mm -hmm. All right, and so before we recess, I'd like to open the floor up to the members uh, for discussion. I recognize Rep. Sablon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, just going back to the um, going back to the language for administrative provisions that I'd like to request that we make sure we include um, to clarify the language for Medicaid that I would like to retain would have to do with uh, the provision that's in this current budget act that treats the Medicaid funds as a single budget. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that provision should remain intact and. Um, the other portions that were vetoed, we are working on a resolution with OPM and Medicaid right now. So I think that for the purposes of this upcoming budget act, we can delete those other provisions. Uh, and then I wanted to also note that there were administrative provisions that the committee requested for um, the soil and water conservation appropriation and also for lands and survey uh, for the digitization project. And, um, and then in addition to that, there is some language in the current Budget Act that uh, is provided for uh, like advance allotments, allotments for CHCC, particularly uh, I think for the medical referral funds. I, I'd like to retain that language for um, all funds that are appropriated for CHCC mm -hmm. and suggest too that we consider similar language for PSS because we know that delayed remittances have been a huge problem for the public school system and, and maybe consider it as well for NMC and NM Tech. Um, and then there's some language, there's an administrative provision that deals with uh, consequences for violations of spending limits. I would suggest that we retain that in this next budget act and also a bar on the use of public funds for paying the utilities of public officials at their private residences. I'd like to suggest that we reinsert that language in this budget act. Thank you. Um, before I recognize uh, the LA, um, yeah, it, my apologies. I had her take out the advancement of funds because of the amounts that were appropriating for those entities. Um, but with the addition of the two new provisions, um, then we, we'll, uh, we can go ahead and include that. But I know, what was the CACC and what was the other one? Um, I was suggesting for PSS, NMC, and NM Tech for the so for healthcare and education, basically. Okay. Um, and I think my understanding was that uh, our intention was also to uh, permit the advancement of funds even from the ARPA. Uh, accounts. Okay. So um, I'd, I'd like to see that continue since there is still some balance okay. remaining from ARPA for medical referral, for example, okay. and um, CHCC uh, should be able to get advance allotments to cover uh, those costs. Okay. Uh, I recognize that. Ellie. So the CNMI scholarship office and CHCC is in here already for advance allotment. So I will include NMC, PSS, and NMTech. There's no objection. That's what I've 
Okay. Uh, no objection. It's uh, Rep. Joel. Yeah, I'm just wondering if the scholarship office actually made that request for the advance allotment. No, we're saying we're putting it in so that if there would be one of the entities that can get more than their monthly allotment, should thank they need to. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. Uh, floor is still open for discussions. Um, if there's none, we will take a recess and come back Monday, um, August 22nd at 1.30 p.m. All right. Recess. <laughs>